assembling a PC. In this video, we are going to see about how to assemble a PC. Assembly of PC means to fit or put together all parts of computer. Building and assembling a computer may be a very rewarding experience and bring significant benefits such as Learn about computer components and how they fit and work together. Understanding the internal and hardware working of a computer. Engendering technical problem solving ability. Saving money. Steps to assemble a personal computer PC Step 1. Choosing the parts A computer is made up of a case also called a chassis which contains several internal and external components including peripherals. Internal components Power supply or PSU Motherboard or mainboard Processor or CPU RAM Hard drive or hard disk, optical drive, video card or graphics card or GPU, external components, keyboard, mouse, monitor, prepare grounding protection, use an inexpensive anti static wrist strap. It is a perfect preventive measure. An alternate is to work on carpet. A table top or bare floor is always the best place to build a system. Make sure you are wearing your anti-static wrist strap correctly and you are ready to proceed. Have the drivers ready. Download the latest drivers from the vendor's websites for each component which is to be installed from another PC with internet connection. It is always best to have the latest. Copy them to a CD for easy access. Step 2. Prepare the motherboard. A motherboard is complex and has so many components and connections. All of the other system components connect to and are controlled by the motherboard. Place motherboard in anti-static bag to safeguard components from potentially hazardous static electricity. Step 3. Install the CPU. Use the unlocking mechanism to open the CPU socket which is usually a lever. Carefully line up the pins and place the chip in its socket. It will fit only when it is oriented in proper way. Align triangular CPU and socket key marks. Lower the lever to lock the CPU into place. Step 4. Install the CPU heat sink. CPU heat sink will cool the process. If user bought an OEM CPU and a separate heat sink, we need to spread a thin layer of the thermal grease that came with the heat sink over the chip to ensure proper transfer of heat. Some heat sinks come with grease which is already applied. Attach the clip that holds the heat sink in place with amount of force. Plug the CPU fan's power connector into the proper connector on the motherboard. Step 5. Install memory RAM modules. For installing the memory modules, insert them into the proper sockets and push down firmly but evenly until the clips on both sides of the socket pop into place. Step 6. Place the motherboard into the case. Some PC cases have a removable motherboard tray. Then remove the screws holding it in place and pull it out of the case. 
Note the pattern of the holes in the motherboard and screw brass standoffs into the motherboard tray or into the PC case in the correct locations. Check the layout of the sockets on the motherboard and confirm that the ports on the motherboard's back panel match the holes on the case input output that is IO shield. Carefully position the motherboard on top of the brass standoffs. Step 7. Connect the power supply. Making the proper connections is crucial step in successfully assembling of a PC system. Manufacturers provide color-coded power cables and unique connector shapes to make the job easy. First, plug the large ATX power connector from the power supply into the matching port on the motherboard. Locate the smaller square processor power connector with yellow and black wires and attach it to the motherboard. Use the motherboard user manual and find the description about front panel connectors. Attach each of the tiny leads from the power and reset switches. Arrange the hard disk activity lights, the PC speaker and any front panel USB and fire wire ports to the corresponding pin on motherboard. The needle nose pliers are useful for manipulating small pieces. Step 8. Install graphics or video cards. Remove the back plane cover from the AGP or PCI Express X16 slot, the metal piece where the monitor connector will emerge. Install the graphics board in that slot and then secure the cord with a screw. Step 9. Install internal drives. Installing drives is an easy process but it requires attention. Insert the new hard disk into an empty hard disk bay in the computer case. It might need a small screwdriver to screw the disk into the case. Depending on the type of hard disk, connect the IDE cable or SATA cable from the back of the disk to the IDE or SATA connector on the computer's motherboard. Connect one cable from the computer's power supply to the power connector on the back of the hard disk. Generally, IDE cables are wide and flat with large connectors while SATA cables are thin with small connectors. Step 10. Install the add-in cards. For each add-in card, we need to choose a free PCI slot. Remove its backplane cover to allow access from the rear of the case. Carefully position the card above the slot and press down firmly to seat the card. Secure the card with a screw. Many motherboards have additional sound connectors or ports housed on small add-in boards. Disassembling a PC In this video, we are going to see about how to disassemble a PC. 
Definition Disassembling refers to reversing the process of assembly. To disassemble, something is to take it apart. Steps to disassembling a personal computer PC Step 1. Unplugging First, unplug every cable that is plugged into the computer for safety purposes. This includes the cables such as power, USB, mouse, keyboard, internet, ethernet, modem, AM or FM antenna, cable TV, etc. Step 2. Opening the outer shell or case. First, unscrew the four screws at the back of the computer. Most computer cases contain large knobs which can be easily unscrewed by hand or by a screwdriver on the back right side of the computer. Once the screws are removed, we can remove the side panels. But in most computers, they just slide off. Start with the left side panel, that is the side that once had the knobs. Slide it towards the back of the computer. Now remove the left panel. Just like the other side, slide it towards the back of the computer. Step 3. Removing the system fan. Unplug the fan from the motherboard. We can find the plug by following the wire from the fan. Next, unscrew the fan from the outside and lift it out of the PC. Step 4. Removing the CPU fan. The CPU fan is located right on top of the CPU heatsink, which is a large piece of metal with fins on the top. The CPU fan plugs into the motherboard in a place that is hard to access, but we can find it easily by following the wires. To remove the fan from the heatsink, remove the four screws securing it in place. Step 5. CD or DVD drives. Then unplug the ribbon from the back of the drive. Then pull on the tab securing the drive in place and then push it out from the driver tab. Step 6. Hard drive. Next, unplug the connector at the back of the slot and unplug the other end from the motherboard. Also, unplug the SATA cable from the motherboard and the hard drive. The portable hard drive slot is secured with a tab same as CD or DVD drive. Handle the hard drive carefully since it is very delicate. Step 7. Memory, that is RAM. To remove the RAM, push down on both the tabs holding the RAM in place, which are located at both the ends of the RAM. Step 8. Motherboard. The motherboard has seven screws holding it to the frame, which are indicated by large white circles around them. Remove them and then lift the motherboard out of the frame. Connecting peripherals of a personal computer. In this video, we are going to see about connecting peripherals of a personal computer. When attaching hardware and peripherals of the computer, ensure that they are connected to the correct locations or ports. Steps in connecting external hardware of a PC Step 1 Attach the monitor cable to the video port. Step 2 
Secure the cable by tightening the screws on the connector. Step 3. Plug the keyboard cable into the PS2 keyboard port. Step 4. Plug the mouse cable into the PS2 mouse port. Step 5. Plug the USB cable into a USB port. Step 6. Plug the network cable into the network port. Step 7. Plug the power cable into the power supply. Laptops and Tablets In this video, we are going to learn about laptops and tablets. Laptops A laptop is alternatively referred to as a notebook. A laptop is a portable computer with the same abilities as a desktop but is small enough for easy mobility. The primary feature that attracts users to laptops over desktops is their portability. Laptop computers provide users the ability to run the machine using an internal battery or an outside power adapter. Laptops usually come with displays that use thin screen technology. The thin film transistor or active matrix screen is brighter and views better at different angles than the STN or dual scan screen. A laptop has an all-in-one design with a built-in monitor, keyboard, touchpad which replaces the mouse and speakers. Tablet Tablet PC is a mobile computing device that is larger than a smartphone or personal digital assistant. A tablet is a wireless portable personal computer with a touchscreen interface. The tablet form factor is typically smaller than a notebook computer but larger than a smartphone. Today, the most common type of tablet is the slate style like Apple's iPad, Microsoft's Surface or Amazon's Kindle Fire. A tablet computer has made enormous development in the last few years. Startup Problems In this video, we are going to see about startup problems. Startup Repair is a Windows recovery tool that can fix certain system problems that might prevent Windows from starting. Startup Repair is one of the recovery tools in the System Recovery Options menu. This set of tools is located on computer's hard disk and on the Windows installation disk. How to use Startup Repair If a startup problem is detected, Startup Repair will start automatically and try to fix the problem. We can get to the menu and start Startup Repair by using the Windows installation disk or a system repair disk. Problems that Startup Repair can't fix Startup Repair can only fix certain problems such as missing or damaged system files. It cannot fix hardware failures such as a failing hard disk or incompatible memory nor it does protect against virus attacks. Startup Repair is not designed to fix Windows installation problems nor it is a backup tool so it cannot help to recover personal files such as photos or documents. To help protect a computer, backup the system and files regularly. Steps to be followed if the Windows would not start correctly. First, we need to restart or boot your computer using the installation disk. There are many approaches we can take to fix the problem that might prevent Windows from starting that is booting correctly. Try System Restore. Determine whether the problem is hardware related. 
Options to try if Windows starts but runs erratically or slow. Options to try if Windows does not start at all. Change restart settings to safe mode. Identification and remedy in runtime problems. In this video, we will see about identification and remedy in runtime problems. Runtime error is a computer hardware or software problem that prevents a program from working correctly. Runtime errors can be caused due to non compatible with a computer program functionality. These errors are given types, numbers, and brief English explanations. They offer the engineer a way to debug their programs in an order fashion. Common cause of runtime errors Corrupt registry or registry error which causes programs to malfunction. Incomplete installation, poor programming, drivers are out of date, virus attack, aging or damaged hardware. Some of the ways to prevent runtime problems are Update windows, turn on automatic updating to update important updates of windows automatically. Important updates provide significant benefits such as improved security and reliability. Steps to be followed for updating Windows Open Windows Update by clicking the Start button. In the search box, type Update and then in the list of results, click Windows Update. In the left pane, click Check for Updates. And then wait while Windows looks for the latest updates for your computer. In the list, click the important updates for more information. Select the checkboxes for any updates that you want to install and then click OK. Click Install Updates, Update Drivers. Make sure that the drivers are latest version, especially the latest video drivers. Having out of the drivers can cause many issues. Steps to be followed to update drivers. Download the latest drivers from the hardware manufacturer's website. You can choose to update drivers from a hardware installation disk or from Windows Update, but updating drivers manually is usually more effective. Open the Device Manager from the Control Panel in Windows 7. With Device Manager open, locate the hardware device that you want to update the drivers for. After finding the hardware you are updating the drivers for, right-click on the hardware's name or icon and choose Properties. In this property window, click the driver tab. Click the update driver button. Memory upgrade. Today, a minimum of 1 GB of memory, that is RAM, for a 32 bit system and 2 GB for a 64 bit system is suggested. Steps for memory upgrade Get a new memory stick, then Turn off the computer and the power supply and unplug the computer. Open up the computer by removing the screws in the back. Locate the memory cards that are already in computer. They are usually long and thin and rectangular in shape. Push the two white tabs down to release the current memory and pull out the chip. Line up the new chip and push it into the place. Make sure it is in the hallway. A clicking sound can usually be heard when the memory is secure. Now turn on the computer. Determining how much RAM is installed and available. If the computer hard drive light is constantly active, it is a good indication of computer is swapping information between the memory and hard drive because of the lack of space in memory. Run registry cleaner. Normally, registry cleaners are not recommended. However, 
If all of the above steps are followed and the computer is still slow, try running a registry cleaner on the computer. Computer or processor is overheating. Make sure computer and processor are not overheating. Excessive heat can cause a significant decrease in computer performance since most processors automatically step down the speed of the processor to help compensate for the heat related issues. Dust, dirt, and hair can also construct a proper airflow on a computer, which can also cause a computer to overheat. Erase computer and start over. If none of the above solutions resolve the issues, it is recommended that to reinstall Windows or erase everything and then start over. Hardware issues. Finally, if the computer continues to be slower than normal after going over each of the above recommendations, it is possible that the computer is experiencing a more serious hardware related issue, such as a failing component in the computer. This could be a failing or bad hard drive, CPU, RAM, motherboard, or other components have to replace the components to overcome the hardware issues. Maintenance of mouse In this video, we are going to see about maintenance of mouse. Properly cleaning a mouse will make it easier to use and prevent the cursor from jumping around on the screen due to dirty rollers. Cleaning of a mouse to clean an optical mouse should take less than 5 minutes, so giving it a quick clean every month should be achievable, which will help ensure it keeps working smoothly. The first step is to unplug the mouse. Once unplugged, look at the bottom of the mouse to locate the area where the LED and the lens are located. Dampen the end of a cotton bud with a few drops of suitable cleaning fluid. Never put fluid directly onto the mouse. Take the damp cotton bud and gently wipe the area to remove any dust or residue. Be very careful not to put any pressure on the LED or lens and also ensure that no excess fluid gets squeezed out of the cotton bud into the mouse. Once it is done, use a dry cotton bud to gently wipe over the area to ensure it is dry. Place the mouse right way up and allow 2 minutes before you plug it back in. Steps for troubleshooting a mouse Step 1. If the computer mouse has stopped moving completely, make sure the computer mouse is plugged in completely. If it is connected, remove the plug and examine for pins that may be damaged. Step 2. If the computer mouse pointer is working in an odd way, check for a virus. Some computer viruses can cause the mouse to not work properly. Download a free antivirus program at FreeAV to run a virus scan on the computer. Step 3. Check the computer mouse driver, go to control panel and open the system folder. Choose device driver tab and arrow down to mouse. Look and see if the driver is installed. If there is a yellow icon, the mouse has a problem. Uninstall the mouse and reboot the computer. Reinstall the mouse driver and reboot the computer. Maintenance of keyboard. In this video, we are going to learn about maintenance of keyboard. Keyboard needs to be cleaned more often than the rest of the parts of PC because dust and debris can collect between the keys can affect their functioning. The surface of the keyboard and keys can be wiped over with a cloth lightly dampened with warm non-soapy water. Must avoid getting the keyboard wet as it may cause damage to the keyboard circuits. 
general problems and their troubleshooting. Struct key. If a key is physically struck in the down position, the steps to be considered when encountering a struck key. Turn off the computer and before working on keyboard. Contact the vendor or manufacturer if the keyboard can be replaced before removing a key. If the key is stuck due to liquid or other substance getting into the keyboard, cleaning might be the only option to try to save the keyboard. Insert the small metal support rod found in the longer keys such as the space and return keys. This rod must be inserted into the key and keyboard before replacing the key into the keyboard. Pressing a key once types several characters. If two or more characters appear when pressing a key, the following steps are used to adjust the key repeat delay. Click Start and then click Control Panel and then click Keyboard. The Keyboard Properties page opens. Set the Repeat Delay slider to Long and click OK. If this problem continues, reinstall and update the keyboard software. Key presses are slow to respond. If there is a short delay from the time a key is pressed to the time the character appears on the screen, the filter keys function might be activated. To disable filter keys and return to the default keyboard behavior, use the following steps. Click Start and type Ease into the Start search field. Select Ease of Access from Programs list. Scroll down the page and select Make the keyboard easier to use. Remove the selection from Turn on filter keys. Click Set up filter keys. Remove the selection from Turn on filter keys when Shift is pressed for 8 seconds. Click Save. The keys should be more responsive. Maintenance of display. In this video, we are going to learn about maintenance of display. The displays can be wiped with a cloth lightly dampened with warm, non soapy water. Steps for troubleshooting display Step 1 Make sure monitor is on. Some monitors have more than one power button or switch. Check to make sure that they are all switched on. Step 2 Check for disconnected monitor power cable connections. Step 3 Check for disconnector monitor data cable connections. Again, Monitor might be turning on without a problem, but no information can get to it because the cable that connects a monitor to computer is disconnected or loose. Step 4 Turn the monitor's brightness and contrast settings completely up. The monitor might be showing information but cannot see it because these display settings are too dark. Step 5. If the new monitor is connected, does not show anything either, proceed to next step. Step 6. Determine why computer is not sending information to the monitor. Find that computer is the reason for showing nothing onto the monitor. Then, there might be a chance of original monitor working fine. Step 7. Test original monitor with a monitor data cable which is working. It is possible that the monitor itself is working properly but it cannot receive information from the computer because the cable that connects the monitor to the PC is no longer working. Step 8. 
Purchase a replacement monitor data cable to test with. If monitor data cable are not replaceable, then replace the monitor. Maintenance of printers. In this video, we are going to learn about maintenance of printers. Performing regular maintenance on printer will prolong its life and ensure it is in proper working order when you need it. Most printer maintenance tasks are simple and requires little or no expense. Printer maintenance is simply cleaning the printer and protecting it from harmful dirt. Without preventive maintenance, these contaminants can reduce output quality, causes operational problems or even stop a printer from running. Troubleshooting the problems of printer Basic printer display errors Most networked printers will have a display that will tell its status. Offline Press the Go or Online button. If this does not change the printer display to online, then power the printer off for one minute and then turn it back on. Paper jam. Open the doors and remove any paper, being careful not to tear it and loose pieces inside. Paper may also be lodged under the toner cartridge, so have to pull it out. If the jam is severe, contact the printer vendor for their expertise to rectify the problem. Processing job. If the printer displays the processing job but nothing is printing, the job may just be really large and taking some time to print. If it has not printed after 5 minutes, press the cancel job button on the printer. If the job is not cancelled, power the printer off for 1 minute and turn it back on. I.O. or other error most I.O. errors will be cleared by powering the printer off for one minute and turning it back on. Also, need to check to make sure that the network cable on the printer is plugged securely into the printer and into the network jack on the wall. Flashing lights. Some printers will have flashing light codes to tell what is wrong. These will differ from manufacturer to manufacturer and also from model to model. Printer drivers In the case of local printers, sometimes a driver can become corrupted. Please try downloading the newest driver from the manufacturer's website and reinstall the printer. Deleting stuck print jobs Sometimes print jobs may get stuck in the queue and will need to be deleted before any one print. To delete a print job, press the cancel button on the printer. You can also delete your own jobs by clicking, click on start, devices and printers, double clicking the printer and deleting the job from the printer. The printer may need to be powered off for one minute to clear out its internal memory. Cable connections. Check to make sure all cables are connected securely. This includes the power cable connections from your PC to the printer for a local printer and connections from the printer to the network jack in the wall that is network printers. To be safe, Unplug the cable and plug it back in, especially the network cable. Uninstalling and reinstalling a network printer. To uninstall, click on Start, Devices and Printers. Right click the network printer that you would like to uninstall. Then click on Remove Device. Maintenance of Floppy Disk Drive FDD. In this video, we are going to learn about maintenance of floppy disk drive FDD. Maintenance on floppy disk drives is not necessary 
because they are not really used much nowadays. However, for preventive maintenance on a floppy disk drive or to clean it when it begins to fail. Maintenance of floppy disk drive Step 1 Verify that the floppy disk drive works. Step 2 Using a floppy disk drive cleaning kit, follow its directions to clean the reed dried heads. Use a small handheld vacuum with a brush head to remove any dust from the opening of the floppy disk drive. Step 3 Test the drive before only. Basic floppy disk drive troubleshooting. Bad floppy diskety. Verify that the floppy diskety that is used to read from is not write protected or bad. Verify that the diskety is not write protected by sliding the tab into the position not allowing light to shine through it. If do not have a tab, place tape over this hole. Not set up in CMOS. Verify that the floppy drive is properly set up in CMOS setup. If the floppy drive is not set up properly, we may experience read write errors or the floppy may not work at all. Conflection with other hardware Temporarily disconnect the new hardware which is recently installed, such as a tape drive, to ensure that. It is not the cause for floppy drive not working. Not connected properly. Verify that the floppy connection is connected to the motherboard FDD connector. If the floppy cable has more than one connection, verify that floppy is connected to the appropriate connection. Bad hardware. If you continue to experience issues after following the above steps, it is likely that hardware within the computer is bad. Replace the floppy data cable that connects the computer floppy drive to the motherboard or I.O. board. Replace the floppy if the floppy data cable did not resolve the issues. Maintenance of hard disk drive. In this video, we are going to learn about maintenance of hard disk drive. Hard drive maintenance is a very important step in computer maintenance. Maintaining hard drive is one of the best ways to keep the computer running smoothly and fastly. Hard drive usually fills up with junk and it needs to be cleaned up so that it can run smoothly again. If not cleaned, computer can get so slow and that it is nearly unbearable to work on. To avoid this problem, we need to do hard drive maintenance, defragmenting the drive. After some time of installing and uninstalling, files tends to get fragmented and the computer has to search in different locations to access it. Methods to overcome this defragmenting Click the Start on the taskbar. Under All Programs, click on Accessories and then click on System Tools. Click on Disk Defragmenter. Click on the Defragmenter Disk button. Clean your registry. Every time you uninstall a program, the computer leaves the traces of that installation in your registry. And this can slow down the computer overall performance. Unfortunately, Windows does not include an application to fix this problem. Repairing your hard disk Windows comes with an application which checks the computer for bad sectors. Bad sector can slow down the computer because the hard disk has a tough time reading them. Right click on disk under computer and click on properties. 
Under the Tools tab, click on the Check Now button. Click on Scan for and Attempt Recovery of Bad Sectors and then click on Start. It may ask to restart the computer. If click S, yes, the next time when computer restarts, it will do a disk scan. Problems that occur after installed hard drive are always a simple matter of incorrectly connected cable in current jumper system. First, turn off the system. Check the cables and make sure that they are aligned, have power and restart the system. Once a hard drive is configured properly and recognized by the system, it generally continues to work properly until it fails. Displays a warning of impending drive failure such as odd noises coming from the drive, dialogues warning of read or write failures or a smart drive failure warning when you start the system. Isolating the problem When a functioning of drive fails or begins returning read or write errors, there may be many possible causes. Steps for isolate the cause of problem Step 1. A failing drive can become a failed drive at any moment. So, copy the important files to another hard drive or an optical disk. Step 2. If copying all of the files needed is done then, copy them again. A particular file may be corrupted on one copy but readable from another. If you get a read failure error while copying a file, choose the retry option several times until you are sure it would not succeed. Step 3. If read-write errors occur only after the system has been running for a while, it is possible that the drive is overheating. If the hard drive is very hot, leave the side panel off and point a standard house fan directly into the case to cool the drive. Step 4. One of the most common causes of hard drive read-write errors is a marginal power supply. Power supplies may begin failing spontaneously and non-obviously, so this problem is always possible. Step 5. Read-write errors even occur if you have recently added components to system. Particularly, a hot new video adapter or some other component that draws a lot of power. We can eliminate the power as the cause of the problem by temporarily or permanently replacing it with a high quality, high capacity chapter. Step 6. If the hard drive temperature seems reasonable and the power supply is not the problem, we may have a cable problem. Power down the system and replace the data cable with a new cable. Also remove the current power cable and use a different one. Step 7. Connect the drive to a different interface. If the drive is PATA primary master, leave it configured as master, disable the primary ATA interface in BIOS setup and connect the drive to the secondary interface. For an SATA drive, disable the current SATA interface in BIOS setup and connect the drive to another SATA interface and change the boot device priority. Step 8. If it is not solved, then remove the problem drive from the current system and install it in another system. It is possible that all of the motherboard interfaces have failed in the original system. If so, the drive is not the problem and it should function normally in the second system. If none of these non-destructive testing steps allows you to access the drive, it is likely that the drive is physically damaged which does not bode well for data recovery. Maintenance of Compact Disk Drive CDD In this video, we are going to learn about maintenance of compact disk drive CDD. One of the most common causes for broken CD-ROM drives are dust and defective mechanical parts. 
these can be fixed rather easily without needing special knowledge these problems are dusty focus lenses grease blocking the mechanic broken drive belts step 1 opening the drive most cd rom drives use a drawer for loading the media if the drive has a drawer the first step is to remove the front plate of the drawer by pushing it upwards while the drawer is open pull it a bit outwards in the middle helps in doing this now open the case step 2 removing cables simple jacks can be pulled off without needing further action if it is stuck lift the plastic material using a small screw driver at the marked positions a bit more care is needed in combination with foil connectors since these are more damageable step 3 solving problems problem 1 broken drive belts This problem is easy to find and is likely to appear in older drivers. Broken belts can be repaired using super glue if they are not oily or buy a new belt. These are available as replacement parts for cassette drives. A less common problem are oily belts. Clean them using washing up liquid. The belt wheels can be cleaned using dry tissue. problem 2 dusty focus lens this is the most important part of the drive it consists of a soft bedded slide with a laser the fixed lens system and the versatile focus lens mounted on it problem 3 sticky mechanics another common problem is sticked mechanical parts this can occur due to two reasons the first is grease in combination with dust resulting in a sticky film fixing the slide or wheels the second reason is aggregated grease at the end position of the rails troubleshooting compact disc drive method 1 clean the disc when there is a problem with cd or dvd drive always check the disc first to see whether it is damaged or dirty To clean the disc follow these steps Remove the disc from the drive Clean the disc with a disc cleaning kit or by gently wiping the silver side of the disc with a dry soft lint free cotton cloth Reinsert the disc in the CD or DVD drive If the computer can read the disc it is finished If the computer still cannot read the disk, go to method 2. Method 2. Try a different disk drive. If the computer does not have more than one disk drive, insert the disk in a different computer. If the CD or DVD drive cannot read the disk, the disk may not be compatible with the drive. Method 3. Make sure that the disk is compatible with the drive. Check the following list to make sure that the disk that you are trying to use is compatible with the CD or DVD drive. A DVD disk is incompatible with a standard CD drive. If the disk is incompatible, use a compatible disk or contact the vendor for compatible replacement. Method 4 Use Windows Update to check for updated drivers. If the disk is compatible with CD or DVD drive, check for updated drivers that the CD or DVD drive may be missing.
Maintenance of Switch Mode Power Supply SMPS Motherboard In this video, we are going to learn about Maintenance of Switch Mode Power Supply SMPS Motherboard SMPS is an electronic device installed in the CPU of computer which is responsible for conversion of AC power supply into DC power supply. Switch Mode Power Supply SMPS is one of the essential components of computer which ensures the proper working of computer. SMPS energizes to motherboard, hard disk drive, CD, DVD, ROM, etc. Nowadays, most of the computer uses ATX SMPS with SATA cable attachment. Problems related to SMPS and their remedy combusted coil a winding coil is present on the board which sometimes gets burnt due to excessive flow of current this problem can be identified easily by the smell or you can identify through the burnt marks located on the external section of the winding coil it may be possible that internal loop is damaged and we can identify this by using the blue ring tester Micro crack. Improper maintenance and handling while transferring it from one place to another could also lead to physical damage, which produces micro cracks on the IC or smaller sized components. This cannot be identified easily, and we need some professional magnifying glass to identify it and repair it. Faulty SMPS component. The damage in the electrolytic capacitor or freewheeling diode cause problem in the proper functioning of SMPS. In many of the cases, power IC is the main culprit which is prone to error and you can use UC3842 IC tester to detect the problems. Main circuit board faults if the power supply LED is not working properly, blinking or dim or shuts. If it does happen, then we must check the each component mounted on the main area of SMPS. Beside the main section, do check the other portion of the board also. Lack of knowledge. It is observed that people sometimes misinterpret the connection order and this can become the guardian not for them. This action will lead to a serious danger and it may cause them to lose their PC. So, it is always recommended to take professional help from the online technical support provided by original equipment manufacturer. Dry soldering it is also noticed that in many cases, loose connection due to dry soldering can halt the proper functioning of a computer. Dry soldering is a common problem which occurs when a component is not connected properly to the electronic circuit board which is responsible for converting AC into DC, that is full wave rectifier. Troubleshooting failure in SMPS Step 1 First, check that there is no sign of physical damage. Determine whether the motherboard seems burned, blown, foam board, has a broken connector, corrosion, exploded capacitors, or dirty fans and chips, etc. Step 2 Check that the BIOS battery provides sufficient voltage. Step 3. Using a multimeter, measure the motherboard supply voltages 5V, 12V, 3.3V, etc. If there is an abnormal voltage, check for power supply. Step 4. Check all the chip clock input and output signals until find the failure component. Step 5. Remove and replace the failed component 
with the same type then boost to test operation. Step 6 In the above steps fail to fix the problem, find a motherboard with the same characteristics and replace it completely. Servicing of mouse In this video, we are going to learn about servicing of mouse. Most problems with mouse are related either to its port connection, the mouse driver, the trackball in a trackball mouse or a trackball unit and the operation of the mouse buttons. In the newer computer systems, the mouse and keyboard are connected by USB ports. Normally, damages are caused by failure ports or by mouse buttons or the movement of the mouse. Servicing the mouse can be an option to retrieve the working of mouse. How to service a mouse? Remove the screw. First, remove the screw at the back of a mouse. Remove the front panel. Grab the top shell of the mouse and lift up to remove. Check the board. Now, check the board inside the mouse. Check for the failure components in the mouse board. Replacing failure component. Remove the component that are damaged and replace it with the new components. Also check the scrolling wheel of the mouse. Mouse buttons. Check both the left and right clicks. Take the plastic buttons and flip them down. Now file both the buttons flat to remove ridges. Clean the LED bulb and the surrounding area on the bottom of the mouse with a cotton swab dampened with isopropyl alcohol. Now reassemble the components. Servicing of keyboard. In this video, we are going to learn about servicing of keyboard. In today's throwaway society, we tend to run out and buy a cheap 400 keyboard to replace our previous high quality keyboard. This is fine as a temporary solution, but eventually we are going to want that quality feel and function back. Prepare the computer. The first thing we need to do is diagnose the keyboard. Find out what is wrong with it. On a Windows machine, go to the Start menu, point to All Programs, point to Accessories, point to Ease of Access and finally select On Screen Keyboard. Plug the keyboard into an available USB port. Starting from any corner, start pressing one key at a time and note that the same key displays grey on the screen keyboard. Disassemble keyboard. Disassemble the outer case. This consists of removing three Allen screws from the underside of the keyboard. The keyboard assembly then lifts out of the base. Depending on the manufacturer of the keyboard, ribbon cables may be latched in or held. Construct test jumper. Now we need a jumper wire to test the keyboard encoder. Simply cut a 6 to 8 inches length of 30 gauge wire and strip about 1 by 32 to 1 by 16 of an inch from each end. Using your finger and thumbnail, Curve one end of the exposed wire to form a tiny hook. Test the encoder board. Using the jumper wire from the previous step, we will test the keyboard encoder. Repair the trace. Using the conductive ink dispenser, carefully dab the ink from a good spot of the trace before the problem area, over the problem area and into a good spot after the problem area. Do not draw it on like an ink pen or felt marker. The liquid component in this pen will dissolve the original tracing material and break it if you scratch across it. Reassemble the keyboard assembly. Return the keyboard to the solid surface and carefully place the flexible caps at every key position. Note that some keys on the edges are pushed up 
by the weight of the assembly. Make sure that the little nub on the cap is in the keys hole. On the others, the caps simply need to fit the recess. Make sure that every key has a cap. Now, we need to place the matrix sheets exactly in the right position. Note that there are a number of keys that appear as raised plastic on the key assembly. Reattach the back plate. Carefully place the back plate over the matrix sheets in the correct position. Note how the anchor holes line up. Test the repaired keyboard assembly. Check every key and make sure it works. If any new keys do not work or two keys press each other. Remove the screws surrounding the problem area to the side of the keyboard. Hold it slightly open on the edge and blow hard into the space. Now, put the screws back in. Once the keyboard tests OK, disconnect the keyboard assembly and tighten the screws using the same every other screw technique. Maintenance of Uninterruptible Power Supply that is UPS In this video, we are going to learn about Maintenance of Uninterruptible Power Supply that is UPS The basic component that differentiates an UPS system from a power conditioner is the battery. If the batteries fail before the backup generators come online, the critical power goes down. Improperly installed, poorly maintained and inadequately tested batteries are common happenings. Only the fact that the backup generators are highly reliable and come online in a few seconds prevents many UPS battery banks from failing long before their rated design life. Generally, maintenance costs and maintenance access are the greatest contributing factors to poorly maintained battery systems. To maintain UPS battery, factors are Maintenance cost These battery maintenance costs may appear high, but compared to the cost of an unplanned critical load outage, they are relatively small. Maintenance access a single system battery requires an UPS system shutdown on not less than a quarterly basis. Shutdown should be done in conjunction with the maintenance shutdown for the UPS equipment. It is recommended that the site maintenance personnel not to provide quarterly maintenance to the battery without an UPS shutdown. Preventive maintenance Periodic maintenance is required and written records of tests and maintenance must be kept. Maintenance Procedures Always follow the battery manufacturer's procedures and check warranty requirements. All have maintenance instructions for their sales and some will conduct maintenance seminars or presentations. Maintenance Considerations Specifics of maintenance requirements will vary because of the battery type, the construction, and the manufacturer's requirements. Maintenance of a battery begins at the time of battery installation. The tests and data taken at that time form the base set of values for the battery to which all future data must be referenced for later inspections. Safety Every UPS battery installation presents safety hazards and safety precautions which cannot be ignored. Most persons trained in an electrical environment are aware that batteries are dangerous but need to be warned and advised again as to the extent of the hazards posed by the UPS battery systems both large and small. Troubleshooting Questionable battery system performance means that all the service checks required under annual inspections will need to be made. Generally, any cell which demonstrates conditions beyond the manufacturer's recommended parameters should be replaced and the system is rechecked to ensure all suspect cells have been removed. Where widespread premature battery failures are encountered, the battery manufacturer service department should be contacted for further instructions. 
Introduction to Operating Systems. In this video, we are going to see about Introduction to Operating System. An operating system is a program that acts as an intermediary between the user of a computer and computer hardware. The purpose of an operating system is to provide an environment in which the user can execute programs in a convenient and efficient manner. The development of operating systems from the first hands-on systems through multi-programmed and time-shared systems to current handheld and real-time systems. Understanding the evolution of operating systems gives an appreciation for what an operating system does and how it does it. Common desktop operating systems include Windows and Linux. While each OS is different, they all provide GUI graphical user interface that includes a desktop and the ability to manage files and folders. They also allow you to install and run programs written for the operating system. Windows and Linux can be installed on standard PC hardware. While early mobile operating systems lacked many features, Found in desktop operating systems, they now include advanced capabilities such as the ability to run third-party apps and run multiple apps at once. Windows Troubleshooting In this video, we are going to see about troubleshooting of Windows. User ensures that their computer BIOS settings are correctly configured to the hardware that is installed in your computer. Improper settings in the BIOS may cause various errors when first booting off computer. These errors often occur as the computer is first booting and may stop the load process of the computer. If user have recently changed or installed something that could have caused normal windows to stop loading, Try loading the last known good configuration. If users are unable to get into normal windows and believe that removing or uninstalling a program or changing a setting may help enable you to get into windows, boot the computer into windows safe mode. If user's computer has worked fine in the past but recently has been experiencing the issue of users encountering Run the system restore option to restore the computer to an earlier date. If errors occur but Microsoft Windows still loads, verify no issues or conflicts exist in device manager. If errors are found, user read through their device manager page for steps on resolving issues. Ensure that if programs are loading automatically, the errors are not associated with these programs. Many times, utilities such as virus programs may load when Windows first starts and cause errors. If user believes that their startup errors are associated with another program, refer to the basic software troubleshooting. Make sure Windows is up to date. If user's computer has a virus protection program installed, make sure it is up to date and that no viruses are being detected. If user computer does not have a virus protection program, user may want to consider installing an antivirus program to make sure no viruses are causing their problems. User make sure of the computer has at least 500 MB of free hard drive space. If their computer has less than 500 MB free, it may cause the computer to operate more slowly. Click Start, Search and click for Files or Folders. In the search window, search for files named .tmp and make sure you are searching or looking in the local C drive. Once search has been completed, delete any files found. 
user verifies the computer has the latest drivers for the hardware devices installed in their computer. Linux troubleshooting. In this video, we are going to see about troubleshooting of Linux. Linux is a Unix like operating system that is OS created by Linus Torvalds. Today, Linux is used by millions of people around the world. Troubleshooting has always been one of the most frustrating aspects of computer ownership. RAM Random Access Memory Information User can give this command to check the property of the RAM. CAT slash PROC slash ME info. Also, this command will let you know the amount of RAM you can work. In addition to that, CAT slash PROC slash ME info slash head hyphen N1 is another command which will open up the RAM and take a peek. Also, there is another command which the user will show all the string that is plain text values in RAM. The command is sudo space dd if is equal to slash dev slash mem modulus cat modulus strings. CPU central processing unit information. During the course of Linux troubleshooting, user might want to know the property of CPU, how much of CPU is being used by the operating system. In order to know the status and property of CPU, the command used is CAT slash PROC slash CPU info. Temperature of CPU Do not forget to check the temperature of the CPU during the process of troubleshooting. The temperature of the CPU can be checked with the command CAT slash PROC slash ACPI slash thermal underscore zone slash THRM slash temperature. Comparison of Windows and Linux operating systems. In this video, we are going to learn about comparison of Windows and Linux operating systems. Price Linux. The majority of Linux variants are available for free or at a much lower price than Microsoft Windows. Windows. For desktop or home use, Microsoft Windows can run between 3175 rupees to 9532 rupees. Ease. Although the majority Linux variants have improved dramatically in ease of use, Microsoft has made several advancements and changes that have made it much easier to use operating system and although arguably it may not be the easiest operating system, it is still easier than Linux. Reliability The majority of Linux variants and versions are notoriously reliable and can often run for months and years without needing to be rebooted. Although Microsoft Windows has made great improvements in reliability over the last few versions of Windows, it still cannot match the reliability of Linux. Software Linux has a large variety of available software programs, utilities and games. Windows has a much larger selection of available software because there is a much larger selection of software programs, utilities and games for Windows. Software cost Many of the available software programs, utilities and games available on the Linux are freeware or open source. Although Windows does have 
software programs, utilities and games for free. The majority of the programs will cost anywhere between 1270 rupees to 12700 rupees per copy. Hardware Hardware manufacturers have made great advancements in supporting Linux. It still will not support most hardware devices. However, for the hardware devices that have driver support, they usually work in all versions of Linux. Windows has a much larger support for hardware devices and almost all hardware manufacturers will support their products in Microsoft Windows. Security Linux is and has always been a very secure operating system. Although it still can be attacked when compared to Windows, it is much more secure. Although Microsoft has made great improvements over the years with security on their operating system, their operating system continues to be the most vulnerable to viruses and other attacks. Open source Many of the Linux variants and many Linux programs are open source and enable users to customize or modify the code however they want to do. Microsoft is not open source and the majority of Windows programs are not open source. Support Although it may be more difficult to find users familiar with all Linux variants, there are vast amounts of available online documentation and help, available books and support for Linux. Microsoft Windows includes its own help section, has vast amount of available online documentation and help, as well as books on each of the versions of Windows.